All right, join me on page 75 now. We're still estimating quotients using compatible numbers. And let's go over these examples here. So number one has 22 and 4 fifths divided by 6 and 1 fourth. Okay, so usually I'm going to look at the second number here first and say, okay, what is 6 and 1 fourth? 6 and 1 fourth is about 6. Now, once I've decided that, I want to, to get this number, I want it to be compatible with 6. So I'm going to think of multiples of 6. Again, my hand is your hand, so you should be writing this. Now, if you can see it clearly what is going to be a good number here, then go ahead and write it in. But if you don't see it clearly, that's okay. Uh, start counting by sixes and get as close to 22 and 4 fifths as you can. So if I count by sixes, 6, 12. And the reason I'm counting by sixes is because I want 6 to divide into this number very easily. 6, 12, 18, 24. Well, of these numbers, which one is closest to 22 and 4 fifths? 24 is. So I'm going to use that as my estimate. It's, it's close to the actual number. And more importantly, it's very compatible with my 6. Okay, Or equally as important, I should say. So now I'm uh, left with 24 divided by 6, which is a much easier division problem, 4. Okay, Let's look at number uh, 2. So two, we have 12 already. Since we have a whole number here already, I'm gonna leave that one. And now I want to look at three and three fourths and decide, okay, should I use three, which will go into 12 evenly, or should I use four, which will also go into 12 evenly? Now, I would, I would argue that Either one would be a reasonable estimate, but we want to get the, the best estimate or the closest estimate to the exact answer as we can. And three and three fourths would be like having three dollars and three quarters. So that would be equal to 3.75. And three dollars and 75 cents, you're pretty close. You're closer to having four dollars than you are to having three dollars. So I would write this as 12 divided by 4. Okay. And so that's going to give us an estimate of about 3. All right, let's go on to number 3. We have 33 and 7 eighths and 5 and 1 third. So again here, I'm going to look at my smaller number. It's easier for me to deal with the second number. Now on number two, the only reason I used the first number to figure out the second number is because the first number was already a whole number. Uh, so it was nice and easy to just leave it as a 12. But generally speaking, most of the time, I'm gonna look at the second number first. So five and one third, if we changed it to a decimal, would be 5.33 with a repeating three. And that's going to be closer to 5. So when I figure out what I want this number to be, I want 5 to go into this number very easily. So if I don't know exactly what number that should be, I'm going to count by 5s, and I want to get as close to 33 and 7 eighths as I can. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You should be using your scratch paper on this. 30, 35. So I'm trying to decide between 30 and 35. Well, 33 and 7 eighths is almost 34, which is very close to 35. So that's going to be my estimate. So uh, 35 divided by 5 is 7. So I know my answer is going to be about 7. Okay. All right. Let's go down to number 4. Now this one's a little bit trickier because uh, it both numbers, neither number is great to work with, in my opinion. You may, you may think otherwise and say, oh, Mr. Music, this one's easy. But for me, this one's a little more challenging. So 3 and 7 eighths, that's about 4. And 5 ninths, though, do I want to use 1 or do I want to use a half? Well, half of 9 would be 4.5 over 9. Um, 
one whole would be obviously nine ninths. Well, this is only 0.5 away. Um, five is only 0.5 away from being half. So this is actually, it's gonna be better to use one half here. And then three sevens, we wanna change into a whole number and it's closest to four. It's only one eighth away from four. So how many halves are in four? Well, in every one, there's gonna be two. So two times four is eight. Eight halves are in four. And we can show that one half plus one half equals one, and if we do that four times, right, one half plus one half again, one half plus one half again, and finally one half. Ooh. Always run into this problem down here. Plus one half, and it disappeared, but yeah, there should be a half down there. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight halves. All right, let's go on to number five. Okay, this time, again, usually I'm gonna look at the second number. Seven and three eighths is closer to seven. Once I've decided that, now I can count by sevens and get as close to 34 and seven twelfths as I can. So seven, 14, 21, 28, and 35. 35 is very close to 34 and seven twelfths, so I'm gonna use 35, and I get the answer of five, okay. Again, you should be using your scratch paper so you have plenty of room to write. All right, let's take a look at number six. Okay, now here, this is difficult. And this is another tricky one because we have one sixth here, which is closest to zero, but obviously uh, we can't do that. So do we say, okay, do I leave it as one sixth, which you can do, or do I make it one half? Well, if I make it one half, I'm two sixths the way. If I make it one sixth, I'm right on. Now let's look at the first number to help us decide which one of these two we're gonna use. One and two ninths, well that's about one, okay? That's closer to one than it is to two, and it's closer to one than it is to one and a half. So if I leave it as one, and I'm dividing, either one of these numbers is actually gonna be easy for me to divide since I have a whole number one here. So of course, since either one of these numbers is gonna be very compatible or easy to work with, I'm gonna use the number that's closest to the actual, which in this case, it is the actual number, one six. And you, and you may say, well, Mr. Music, you didn't change the number. That's okay, you don't have to change the number when you're estimating. Okay, so one six, how many one six are there in one? Well, if we wanted to make one whole using just one sixth, we would have to add one sixth six times because six sixth is one whole. So one six plus one six plus one six plus one six plus one six, there's five six plus one more six. That would be six sixth, which is equal to one whole. And so how many one six are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So our answer is six here. All right, thanks again for watching, um, and I'll see you on the next one.